moving swiftly and learning through failure, SpaceX says it's already looking ahead to version 2 of the Starship upper stage. In a tweet on November 24th, Elon Musk described this next generation as having high propellant capacity, reduced dry mass, and improved reliability. Although he did not divulge any more information about Starship V2 based on the above information, we can somewhat guess what modifications Starship will have. As you know, after getting the big leaps in IFTO2, the Starship's next test is set to include a powered soft landing which is related to the re-entry ability of the ship. For that reason, the nose cone, which plays a crucial role for the spacecraft during ascent and re-entry, will likely be one of the parts that will be changed as Starship evolves into the next level. So how has Starship's nose cone design changed? This will blow your mind. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. It can be said that the nose cone is considered one of the most essential as well as the most vulnerable parts of a rocket. This conically shaped part is used to modulate oncoming airflow behaviors and minimize aerodynamic drag. During ascent or re-entry, the first point that meets the air is the nose cone at the front end of the rocket. Therefore, if not protected cautiously, this area will wear out very quickly after each move of the rocket. During Starship's second test launch, it was great to see the high reliability of the nose cone as no errors were recorded. It's a result of long-term evolution over many years. Of course, this does not mean that development will stop. According to the latest news, SpaceX plans to work on a major overhaul of its second-stage Starship vehicle, and changing the nose cone is also a part of it. The design changes will be significant enough to special to the ship, giving it the title of version 2. Ellen revealed this next generation will contain more propellant, reduce dry mass, and improve reliability. Okay, let's focus on two key points here, dry mass reduction and improved reliability. Following exactly the principle, the best part is no part. The second one is to change the material's thickness. As you know, SpaceX now mainly uses 3.97 millimeters 304L or X stainless steel, but for years now, we've seen evidence suggesting a cut down of a few tenths of a millimeter, meaning it is shifting to 3.6 millimeters steel. Thinner steel will require more support, but is suitable in less structurally demanding parts. So SpaceX might utilize it for the nose cone covered by the external heat shield layer, for example. Once the steel layer is scraped thinner, the thermal protection system needs to be fixed more carefully. Nothing good would come of those heat shields falling off during traveling, exposing the vulnerable metal inside, which would then be momentarily crushed by air friction. Thus, TPS on the nose cone, as well as the other parts of the spacecraft, is compulsory enhanced to prevent what happened to Ship 25, which lost several tiles during its flight. In addition, there is one more tiny change that few people know about the removal of the squid attachment point, belonging to a traditional method of lifting the prototype. Since the new lifting mechanism is in place, these points are no longer necessary. One expected change that appears to have been overlooked is the repositioning of the front flaps. To be honest, this is nothing new because, in 2021, Elon Musk realized the need to optimize the front flaps. Given that the new flaps would be slightly further forward, or leeward side of the ship, smaller and more inward. This could help remove the section that holds the movement mechanism, which currently is pretty big and has to be covered with heat tiles. As a result, it not only ensures a lighter weight, but also contributes to improving the likelihood of success in each flight. In short, some nose cone upgrades are just a side consequence of Starship's generational shift, Basically, it performed well in the last tests, and as I said, to get the achievement present, Starship's nose cone has had a transformation over time. 
Well, the journey began four years ago with the birth of the Starhopper prototype, the first original Starship prototype. It looks like exactly a water tower with a rounded shape head. Its successful flight on August 27, 2019 set the basis for SpaceX to start creating prototypes like Elon Musk's previous plans. One of the most notable changes by then is to make the rocket pointy. It is too round on the top. It needs to be pointy. Round is not scary. Pointy is scary. This will put a smile on the faces of the enemy. Yeah. Then we saw the presence of the Mark I, the first prototype with a sharper and cooler looking nose cone consisting of five steel rings that tapers gradually towards the top. It has been the official shape of the nose cone ever since. Principal, a rounded curve would be an ideal shape for a cone design to launch into space. However, it's not that the pointed cone has no effect, it's just that it has less effective air resistance. SpaceX temporarily placed the nose cone on top of the Starship MK-1's body as a focal point for CEO Elon Musk's 2019 update event. The MK-1 nose cone was removed immediately after the event, while the more critical part of the rocket, the body, was taken to a nearby launch pad for testing. The evolution flow continued with SN8, a more refined version of the Starship, featuring a true nose cone and both rear and front flaps. On December 9, 2020, this shiny silver vehicle launched on an epic high-altitude test flight from SpaceX's facility near the South Texas village of Boca Chica. Being powered by three engines, the 165-foot-tall 50 meters SN8 reached an altitude of 10 kilometers or 6.2 miles, then performed a belly flop maneuver like the one the final Starship will perform when coming back to Earth on operational flights. Everything went as planned except for the final one. The vehicle hit its landing mark but came in too fast, exploding in a dramatic fireball six minutes and 42 seconds after liftoff. Although the performance was not perfect, the test caught the public's eye about the Starship development. After the success of SN8, SpaceX went one step further in improving the nose cone with Ship 20. This time, one new feature was added, heat shield. It is considered the first Starship design specifically for orbital launches and is also the first design to be placed on a booster rocket. So, TPS was installed as an obvious condition for its reusability. Compared to the previous variants, the Ship 20 nose cone, or current nose cone, has had a change in the manufacturing process. The first nose cones were all made up of five steel rings welded together that gradually tapered towards the top. These rings are also made up of a series of thin, stamped steel. Therefore, it will have a lot of welds, causing a rough appearance with prominent welds at the surface. But with the current versions, the number of steel rings has been reduced from five to two. Steel plates are also increased in size, thereby reducing the number of welds. Moreover, the old welding method is also replaced by a new fiber laser welding method, making the welds more precise, sturdy, and shiny. This upgrade will also make the nose cone more durable to withstand the effects of harsh environments during missions. In particular, after the S-20 was increased from three to six engines, SpaceX planned to move the methane header tank from the common dome to the nose cone close to the liquid oxygen header tank that was previously placed there. This is expected to help direct the load towards the bow of the ship, thereby balancing the mass of the new engines installed at the stern. The introduction of Ship 26, specifically to carry fuel for the Starship's in-space refueling process, marks another update of the nose cone. Because Ship 26 is not planned to come back home after launch, SpaceX decided to ditch some unnecessary parts containing heat shield and a pair of flaps. Thus, the vehicle can be cut down on excess weight. Instead, that weight will be used to increase the fuel payload it can carry to serve its main mission, refueling for other starships. However, the disappearance of both the heat shield and flap does not affect the regular structure and function of the nose cone. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. 
Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.